So with that being said, um, this pump here is 200 feet in length. Um, it is the longest uh, pump that we have here uh, as far as the GeoSub goes. And then uh, with that in respect, we can offer you various sizes. So with that being mentioned, um, power for this guy is, uh, there's a lot of options which makes it uh, so portable and great to use. Um, so seeing this AC plug here, uh, your first instinct would be that it only takes AC power. However, uh, if you guys let us know, um, basically on your application or what job you have, uh, we can also help you in the field using an inverter. So you can hook it up to a battery and or uh, we do offer our own generator or if you guys have your own generator, just make sure the generators meet spec. And what those specifications are is uh, the controller and the pump take 300 watts all together. So all you need to do is if you don't have AC power available, you just need to make sure you have an inverter that's either 300 watts or greater and or a generator that also has 300 watts or greater. But also make sure, this is very key, that the generator has a built-in inverter. Uh, the only way you're going to know that is by checking the specifications of the generator or uh, what they've been making it really easy is they'll put a little lowercase i in the model number. So just please make sure that you guys meet those specifications for uh, the wattage. If you're ever unsure, just give us a phone call. We'd be more than happy to dis discuss those details and or we also offer the equipment ourselves. So uh, the before I set this up in the sink here, I just kind of want to show you guys some of the things you can look for in the submersible pump when you're cleaning it or let's just say you're de decontaminating from one site to another. So I'm going to undo the reel here. It's just a lever. I'll show you on the back side here. You just undo it so it allows you to move the reel. If you don't do that, you will not be able to move the reel or it'll be very tough. OK, so the uh, this is the outer housing that we have here on the submersible pump. So to take it off, it's actually really easy. It's just lefty loosey. Just going to move this stuff out of the way so you guys can see a little bit. Excellent. So there's the outer housing. Now, before I show you the inner housing, what I do want to show you is there's an inlet screen here. Hopefully that's good on the visuals. And then what we can see on the bottom side here is there's actually a snap ring. So cleaning this is actually really easy. All you need is a small flathead screwdriver. Just going to push it out. That's how easy it was. The cap will fall out. Just like so. And then that allows us to take the screen out. This is very important because if you guys ever have uh, issues in the field, um, this is the biggest culprit because this gets jammed up. The flow is not able to get through the actual uh, impeller here, and it makes it much harder for your sample to come up the line. So with that being said, please make sure this is always clean. Um, the, the water that you guys are sampling should be as clean as possible. Uh, any type of silt and sand will definitely clog the screen, and then even worse, get through the screen and eventually meet the impeller. Now the impeller is made of like uh, wetted material that's really resistant to uh, you know chloride and uh, uh, different pH levels and whatnot. But the, the most important thing is to make sure that the impeller actually moves freely. If you hear any grinding, that means you've already got silt into the impeller here and you need to try to wash it out uh, or even using your fingers here and using either DI water or whatever you have available. But um, essentially, sand in here is not good. So uh, with that being said, when you guys are cleaning the submersible pump, just keep in mind you can use detergent and water. Uh, just make sure all the parts are clean. So obviously, the integrity of the sample of the next one uh, isn't contaminated. And then, yeah, that being said, I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to put all this back together plug this in and I'm going to put it in my sink and we're going to uh, go ahead and turn it over. So I'm just going to take the outer housing, put the screen back in, pop it in there. I have my cap. 
Also pop it in there. Snap ring is always better to work from one end to the other. Just like so. I got my glove almost stuck in there. Perfect. Too easy. I'm gonna thread this boy or this bad boy back on here. Just ready tidy. As much as you can go. Just like so. All right. I'm gonna open this bad boy back open. I have my AC power available. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are other options you can use. I'm going to use AC power because it's the easiest for me to use at this point. Next, we have the actual power cable that goes from the controller to the pump. So one end is uh, male, which we have here. The other end is female. I'm going to put all my tail of leftover cable inside the case, just keep it nice. And I'm going to put the female end on the other end here. Sorry, you guys can't see that that well, but I'm sure it's very easy to figure out once you're in the field there. Excellent. So I'm going to be putting the tubing on the end of this barb here. The type of tubing that I have here is poly tubing, but we do offer low density and high density tubing. It's 3 8 by half inch, so just uh, let us know what you guys prefer in the field. The difference between the two different tubing, uh, sorry, the two different sizes of tubing, uh, sorry, not sizes, but two different tubing is one is low density, meaning it's more flexible, and the other one is high density, meaning it's much more resistant. All right, so we have the pump in there. Now, one of the things I didn't quite show you here, because I'm just planning on showing you how it actually just operates, but when you guys do put the pump down holes, you're going to want to make sure you have these pipe clamps. Uh, these pipe clamps right here, these are important to keep the, the tubing at, uh, attached to the barb without coming loose, especially when you start getting to higher pressures uh, or the deeper it is, um, a lot more is going to come through the tubing there, so this will help support it. Uh, we do try to provide these uh, within our rentals. If you guys ever need to find any or get any more of these, you can just find them at the local hardware shop like Rona. Uh, the nice thing about the controller is they actually outline the most important parts on the inside of the top casing here. So it literally says basic operation, assembly, and cleaning. So everything that I go over today, all you have to do is open the top of the case and find all your instructions here. On the actual controller itself, there is so easy. There are only four arrow keys, just like your keyboard. We got up and down, left and right. So basically, our, the basic uh, principle of working this guy is the up and down arrow is going to change your flow rate. And I'll get into that because uh, the flow rate works as a range from 0 to 225. Now, we always get asked all the time, what does 225 represent? It's actually just a range. So um, within the manual, there's actually a performance guide that shows you uh, what flow rates you get at certain uh, uh, head pressure of feet down into the well. So uh, just as a ballpark to give you guys an idea, um, basically if you have 150 feet, so this is 200 feet, right? You can only actually get about uh, 13 liters per minute. But when you go to about 150 feet, you'll actually get more out. So with that being said, um, due to the various sizes of the cable and the, the length of how well or how deep you're going into the well will affect your flow rate. So a lot of people ask me, so how do I figure that out? Well, here at Pine, um, we do offer you, or not offer you, but we do sell buckets that are marked uh, to liters, and we also have graduated cylinders. So all you need is either one of these and a time clock or your cell phone and you just need to do the math and figure out what your flow rate is like that. If you don't wish to do that, then you can just follow the performance guide that's in the manual there. It'll tell you exact flow rate, what you should be expecting at those depths. So to start the guy, I mentioned the up and down is literally the flow rate. Going right is going to start the pump and going left is going to stop the pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it, hitting the right arrow. 
and there we can see the actual water discharge. The rattle is actually just because it's a plastic surface and uh, stainless steel submersible pump is just rattling against it. But if I wanted to adjust the flow rate, I'm just going to go on the down arrow. And you can hear it not rattle so much, obviously. And then I'm going to not actually go the other way because I only have so much uh, water space here and I don't want to get water on my controller. Uh, even though this is a submersible pump, the controller is not. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope uh, you guys learned quite a bit today.